No acting required. It's about uh, three seriously dysfunctional people. They're damaged. They're damaged goods, and it's all about the lies they tell each other, the secrets they keep from each other. In fact, it could be called secrets and lies. But that red mist is about when you know the red mist comes over you, and you you just you you're absolutely furious and you just rage. You've got no other way of expressing yourself. I mean, my character expresses himself through violence, anyway. But yeah, he he loves his daughter dearly, but can't in any way show it at all. So he's uh, typical of many kind of west of you know working class west of Scotland men. Ooh. So if you take the best a few part steps of the performance. Back, it is. It's a beautiful angle. Oh. <laughs> Full of character. <laughs> oh, down here. You see what he's just said. You see, they're not getting the momentum from me, so they've got to shoot my fucking boots to you know, create an energy in the scene. But they're amazing boots. Without you in those boots, there'd be nothing. See, they'd rather have my boots on screen than me. It shows you how mean they are. You see, <laughs> these boots are made for walking. Okay, so I'm happy whenever you are, Chris. Okay. Yeah, if you're happy with that as a start. Take four, eight, take one. It's a film noir. It's a Welsh film noir. It's Welsh because I'm from Wales and I wanted to do something that kind of really used the landscapes of the bit of Wales where I, which I come from, which is the, the Put Albert area with the steelworks on one side, the mountains on the other. So it's an amazing mythic landscape and we wanted to kind of celebrate that element of it and also drawing on the Welsh characters that I knew when I was growing up. Uh, it's a film noir because it's a kind of film that I love, which is it's a thriller, but it's about people. It's about people in conflict. It's like a war movie where the battlefield is the human heart. It's a psychological thriller um, set in the small town of Port Talbot in South Wales. Um, and it, it's mainly Chris's story. So Chris, um, who's also from Port Talbot, moved away for some time. He lived in Canada. He made his money, he made millions. He claims he got robbed by his business partner, he lost it all, he went to jail. So he sort of moved back to the area with his tail between his legs. Billy sort of rules the roost in the town. Um, he's not a man to be messed with. And I play Billy's daughter, who catches Chris's eye and vice versa. So there's a little triangle there. Me and Shannon are really trying to find a, a lightness and a, and a humour and, a, and a, 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 a very real depth to who these two people are, even though she isn't what she quite says she is. Uh, my character th thinks that she is throughout the whole thing. He's totally duped in this whole story. Um, so there are dark moments, but then there's a lot of light and shade that we're bringing to it to try and really make the audience kind of connect with our, you know, the romance of the two of them blossoming. Um, so yeah, you know, there, there is dark moments, but there's there's definitely a lot of there's light and shade, and then there's of course a lot of aggression and anger, and then there's the red mist. So who knows where that comes, you know, at, at that point. I've played, I've, I've played a lot of complex kind of baddies, in a sense, and they're fascinating to play. I mean, you play a good guy. I mean, I've played Jesus Christ on screen. Not, he's a good guy. You don't have to explain your goodness. People just take it for granted. But when you, but when you play a baddie or someone who's, who's driven by evil or greed or something, then there's much more of an exploration can go on. Why is he damaged? What happened to him in his youth? As Nelson Mandela said, no child is born to hate. Every child is born to love, so therefore they have to be taught to hate. And if they can be taught to hate, they can be taught to love. So somewhere in each person's life, a baddie's life, let's say, there's been something that damaged him or her, that turned that innocent young child into the monster that they are today. And that's fascinating. I mean, I do, I mean, I, that not, doesn't necessarily come across on screen. You do that research for yourself and the exploration for yourself to, to give you the motivation and the, the clues to put the character together. So that's it. Just turn your back on me. We need to speak woman to woman. Can I relate to Ellen? I can certainly relate to her. You have to. She's not the most likable character, but you have to, with every character you play, you have to have some connection. And so I definitely feel that share, uh, that, share that feeling of, she feels suppressed, she feels trapped. Um, she wants to get away. I've certainly felt like that before. I'm sure you have as well. Um, and 
terms of her sort of psychopathic tendencies, yeah, my boyfriend might say I have some psychopathic tendencies. <laughs> There's definitely some glimmers of Shannad in there. There has to be some facets of me peeping through. Um, I think there has to be with, with every character. One plays, in my opinion, anyway. It's a psychological thriller, and you know, it's you know, it's a lead role for me. You know, I'm playing the lead role in this, which is you know, I, I haven't played many, excuse me, lead roles in films, so it's been great. It's, this is a great opportunity for me to really show what I can do. And yeah, it's I'm working with great people. I'm working with the great David Heyman and uh, Shannon Gregory, and obviously Chris Crow, the director, who is fantastic, and uh, Alex Metcalf is our DOP, and Philip and Michael and Tiggy, all of the people involved. It's just you know, it's great people. This is a fantastic opportunity for me, so I'm, I'm really, I'm kind of throwing myself at it as much as I can, you know, with every scene, so I want to do a good job, you know, and this is one of those parts that it has an array of different emotions on his whole journey, you know, going from complete loss to feeling like he's getting back again and building himself back up and then only to be, you know, to find loss again and then rage and it's, in, in a way, it's, a, it's an amalgamation of quite a few different parts all thrown into one, so it's a great role, you know, very good role. So just step forward a sec for me, so I can get in behind you. And you're going to be on this, every row over this shoulder here. Okay. Every row, it's belly a challenging role, yes, because he, cause he switches. At one moment he, is, he can be really fierce, uh, extremely violent, and then at others he can be uh, whimsical and uh, devilish. Um, and it's some, some of the jumps, some of the emotional jumps I've got to make are difficult, but it's, but it's good to have a challenge. It's, you know, it's what your job is to find a way through, trying to link all the disparate pieces in a character that's, that's very complex. Because then the challenge is to bring the truth, to bring the integrity. And audiences have to believe you. If they don't believe you, you don't have a movie. You don't have a play. You don't have a TV series. So it's our job to bring the integrity and the truth uh, to what we're doing. Um, and that's always the major challenge. No one wants to play the good girl, do they? No, this has been a ride. This has been a roller coaster. Yeah, I've really loved every minute. Takes a, it takes a second to, you know, when I, when I check back into where I'm staying after a long day, I'm just a bit, <laughs> I'm still Ellen. <laughs> it takes a while to shake her off, but oof, that feeling, it's, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like, there's nothing like when you are so dropped in. And sometimes it takes a minute, you know, but, you know, when you've had a really good day and you've really banged out some amazing scenes, um, yeah, you, you leave set on such a high, you get such a great buzz from it. It's amazing. <laughs>